welcome to another edition of Coon Rob's Corner, brought to you by the Rogers Corporation. Today's topic, making sure your PCB-based RF filter design performs to your expectations. Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod and I am a technical marketing manager for Rogers Corporation. Today I want to talk about how to ensure that your PCB-based RF filter will perform as you expect. Now there's a lot of simulations that are done on filters obviously and sometimes these simulations as they can compare to the real world uh, you can see differences and there's a lot of different reasons for that. Some of that could be some material properties that are not being considered properly and some of that could be circuit fabrication variables that are just normal variation of making a circuit. So today I'm going to talk about some of these practical issues that can impact the RF performance of filters. Now I have had other Coonrod Corner videos on the topic of filters and I invite you to look at those. Those are mostly introductory uh, videos for filters and different types of filters. Again, this is really going to be more focused on the practical realization of RF filters with printed circuit board technology. Shown here are a list of different variables that can impact the RF performance of a printed circuit board filter. Now I've broke this out into two different categories, material properties and circuit fabrication variables. The first one for material properties is sometimes overlooked, and that is anisotropy. And anisotropy has to do with decay differences on the different axis of materials. And most high frequency materials do have anisotropy, where the axis, uh, the z axis, the thickness axis, will have a different decay than the xy plane. That's pretty common for most high frequency materials. Now, copper surface roughness is another issue that is encountered sometimes, and then glass weave effect, and then TCDK. TCDK is thermal coefficient, a dielectric constant, and that's how much the dielectric constant will change with a change in temperature. Now, for circuit fabrication variables, the more common variables that can influence the RF performance of a PCB-based filter is etching tolerances and also the trapezoidal effects. What I mean by the trapezoidal effects are, is when you look at a cross-sectional view of a circuit, in the models, they're typically shown as a rectangular shape. In reality, if you look at a circuit in the microsection, you'll find that the signal conductor is usually trapezoidal shaped and not rectangular. And that trapezoidal shape does make a difference, especially with coupled features. And then final plated finishes, that can impact the RF performance and the variations of the thickness of the final plated finishes can also impact the RF performance of a filter. And then finally, copper plated thickness and the variation of the copper plated thickness, that most certainly can impact the edge coupled features where the side walls would be taller or shorter based on the copper being plated thick or thin. Most of the high frequency circuit materials used in the industry today are anisotropic, and that's just common. Uh, there are a few that are isotropic, but not many. So most of them you do need to uh, realize that you are gonna have some differences of the dielectric constant on the thickness axis, the Z axis, compared to the XY plane. Now, as a general rule, normally what I think about is the lower dielectric constant materials usually do not have as much anisotropy as the high decay materials. That is a general rule. There are some exceptions, but it is a pretty good rule in general. Typically, the material that has the glass weave does have more anisotropy than the material without the glass weave. Shown here is a list of high frequency materials and there are different dielectric constants for the z-axis and also for the xy plane. The z-axis dielectric constant was obtained by doing microstrip differential phase length testing and the xy plane dielectric constant was obtained by using SPDR which is split post dielectric resonator testing. Uh, both of these numbers are obtained at 10 gigahertz and just for a comparison between low decay and high decay with no glass weave that would be the RO3003 materials compared to the RO3010 materials. In the case of RO3003 materials, the z-axis decay is 3, the xy plane is 3.05. So that's not too bad for anisotropy. Now in the case of the RO3010, a much higher dielectric constant material, the difference is 11.2 and 12.4 for dielectric constant, and obviously that is more anisotropy. Now another comparison is the same material essentially with and without glass. So without glass, again, the RL3003 laminate, which is the first row of information, and the fifth row of information is the RL3203 laminate, and that shows a difference of dielectric constant of 3.02 versus 3.14, which is more anisotropic than the RL3003. The RL3203 does have the glass weave, and the RL3003 material does not. 
There is another variable that is called the glass weave effect, and that also can behave like anisotropy, where you can get differences in the dielectric constant from the z-axis versus the xy plane. However, the glass weave effect is usually more random, and it's usually in, uh, comes into play wherever you have a product that's in very large manufacturing being ran in very large volume, and you can have good performance on maybe 50 or 100 circuits, and then out of uh, nowhere, essentially, you will have a circuit that you have this big change. And that sometimes is when the conductor pattern aligns to the glass weave pattern in a very perfect way to have this glass weave effect. And on edge coupled type of filters, this glass weave effect can most certainly affect the coupling. And it's really doing that because the odd mode can be different than the even mode, depending on if the glass is part of the fields or not. Shown here are 3D images of a microstrip edge coupled. It could be an edge coupled bandpass filter, but it's really just a section of that. And I'm showing even and odd mode. So in even mode, you can see the fields are mostly using the z-axis dielectric constant of the material. And in odd mode, you have also the fields using the z-axis, but also you have fields using the xy plane where they're coupled together from one conductor to the other. And in the case of the middle picture, you can see that the electric fields are involved with the glass pattern, and glass does have a higher dielectric constant than the resin in this case. And then to the very far right picture, you see another picture of odd mode where the conductors align to the glass pattern in a different way, and now the electric fields are not in touch with the glass. So between the odd mode in the middle picture and the odd mode to the right picture, there will be a difference in the effective dielectric constant and phase response, and that's due to the glass weave effect uh, having some influence on the coupled uh, fields in some cases and other cases not. This concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you're not already a member, join the Rogers Technical Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more Rogers Corporation informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Raj mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.